and YouTube, I will hope you guys are having a fantastic day and we are back to do another rebuild and actually today we're going to make this a realistic style rebuild. I haven't done one in a while so I'm going to be super realistic in this video because the Atlanta Hawks are a young team and uh, they're kind of looking like they're going to build through the draft which I can respect and I think it looks, I think it's you know, respectable enough to where they could become a very good team in the next couple few years, couple few years. They're gonna have some nice players if they keep their roster intact everything's gonna look good so uh yeah man we've been busting out these videos i've been grinding every day i have not missed an upload in a while so i hope you guys can really appreciate that i am working a ton of hours on my other job and i'm still getting videos out to you guys for instance i worked i just got done working today and i worked a 58 hour total week but i'm still doing this no excuses this stuff gets done you guys are a huge part of my life so i always make sure to do videos and it is a good time to do videos right now because it's popping man my channel is doing really good and it's all thanks to you guys but thank you guys for that but we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this so we all know in case you don't there was a huge trade yes not really a huge trade but i would say it is kind of a huge trade uh tourney prince 2021 second round pick and then 2021 that first round pick should be lottery protected i forgot to do that but that's all right and then alan crab and yeah so uh alan crab got to uh trade it to us and then of course so basically this was kind of a salary dump for the nets and uh you know they used to, they should be able to use their cap a little bit better and we're gonna have three first round picks in this draft so obviously like i said i think the hawks are really looking to just build through the draft and it is a nice uh process to do that sometimes it works so we're gonna try that for today so i don't know who we're gonna have available that is the fun part but we got offers but i'm not even gonna look at those let's see who's on the board still so you have Jarrett culver still here jackson hayes do we still have options the alexander walker um so when i look at this Jarrett culver we don't really have a shooting guard well i guess kevin herter you could say Jarrett culver is uh six seven so we could play him at small forward which was what we kind of need so Jarrett culver as the wing is going to be our wing player here and sent to the next pick and we kind of need a for uh, a uh, center as well so let's look at that let's see who was taken they no center so we can choose between jackson hayes and bull bull i think the last time i did a hawks rebuild i chose jackson hayes so i think i'm gonna go a little different here and choose bull bull and now with the 17th pick, we kind of have our starting five, if you ask me. But with the 17th pick, we could get Jackson Hayes as well. Darius Garland is here. And uh, I know these guys are obviously good players to select, but I don't think I'm going to take any of them. So, uh, Teller Harrow, Matisse Thibe. I just think that's a little overkill. I mean, like I said, I'm trying to be realistic here. Darius Garland, Jackson Hayes, I think are going to be players that are taken in the lottery. Uh, Romeo Langford might fall out. Hachimura might still be here. So, I'm choosing between those two. And... Um, if really think about it i think i'm gonna go with uh lankford because uh we're gonna see how he would do and then we'll go to the second round as well we'll probably draft some players in the second round as well uh just in case kevin herter doesn't really work out we don't need another shooting guard so i'm gonna look for like let's go with like chris wilkes at this backup small forward and let's see what's uh with the 42nd pick overall and we got admiral showfield here Jaden Mc... I, I think i'll take Jalen mcdaniels out of san diego state so we can sign all of our draft picks because like i said this is being built through the draft, baby. So we're going to go ahead and sign all these guys. I think we had another second round pick, but I'm not going to worry about that. So this is what we're going to get. I'm going to sign all those guys. This is looking pretty darn good. And then player options, Kim Bazemore, of course, accepts his. Of course, we want to bring back John Collins. Bambri, I could see them bringing him back because he is 25 years old. So I'm going to bring him back. And then uh, Deontay Davis, I guess we can bring back. And Isaac Humphreys, probably just renounce. But as far as qualifying offers, Justin Anderson, I really don't picture him being back on the Atlanta Hawks. And I also don't picture uh, Vince Carter being back in Atlanta. I, uh, Tareen Prince, obviously, he's not here anymore. Deadman, I think, is going to go to a different team. He's going to explore free agency. And now when we look at the roster, uh, $18 million. Of course, we could choose to spend that. But we have Trey Young at the point guard right now. A lot of shooting guards. Alan Crabb and uh, probably Kent Bazemore aren't going to get any minutes this offseason. We don't really have a small forward. But I think I definitely, like I said, I was going to move. Uh, Jared Culver to the small forward. He's going to play small forward, and we'll have what's his name in the backcourt. He does go down one, but you know what? We're going to just roll with it anyway. I want to start Kevin Hertzer still at the shooting guard because uh, I know eventually he uh, will be good there. And then Bembry, what's, uh, what else did we do? We could move Kent Bazemore to the small forward too. Uh, so we'll do that because we have a lot of shooting guards as it is. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's move Kent Bazemore back to shooting guard. Uh, he'll be the backup for this year. Uh, we could even probably buy him out the deadline or trade him for like a second rounder. Maybe somebody would use him. I don't know. But Jared Culver, Bembry, uh, John Collins, Amari Spellman, and then Alex Lennon-Bowl. So the center spot's fine. 
Power forward, Armari Spellman. I, I don't mind playing him off the bench. Uh, Bembry and Jarrett Culver is fine with me. Kevin Herter and Kim Bazemore, and then a point guard. So, yeah, we basically one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have a nine-man rotation. I really don't picture the Atlanta Hawks being that aggressive in free agency. Like I said, I think this is a team that's definitely looking to build through the draft. So that's what I'm going to roll with. I'm going to just keep building through the draft, send some players to the G League, develop it. And uh, I'm probably going to do more than three seasons today. I think I'm just going to keep simulating. This is going to be more of a simulation more than a rebuild. So uh, I think that's what I'm going to think about this. Because I think, like I said, we're just going to be churning through this. Um, just getting uh, young players to the draft and uh, just continuing to see how Trey Young and John Collins and the players we just uh, drafted develop next to him. So really excited to see the rotation and see what we're going to go with. But we load, let's go ahead and load the 2021 draft class, of course, or 2020, I should say, not 2021. Training camps, uh, we have one unt untapped potential. That is something that does suck for me because in the first season, I always have one uh, training camp because, like I said, the staff is auto saved for me. So I can't really change it. I mean, I could, I guess I could, but I don't know if I'd get. So, Romeo Lankford, I like I said, I kind of want to start uh, Kevin Herter over him. So, we're going to go ahead and back him out of here. I kind of actually want to send Rome, Romeo Langford to the small or to the G League. We have Trey Young, Kevin Herter, Jer, uh, Jarrett Culver, John Collins, Alex Lynn at the center spot. I don't like that here. Kent Bazemore, Bull Ball, Romeo Langford. Uh, a lot of. All right, let's kind of run an eye meditation actually. And then uh, we're going to probably send. Should I send Romeo Langford to the G League or should I send Kevin Herter? Because I kind of want to see Kevin Herter being the guy going forward. I really don't want Romeo Langford being the guy. So, you know what? I actually might send Kevin Herter there instead. The Bull Bull, um, I'm probably not going to send there. Amari Spellman, I will send there, though. And then I think we'll roll with that. We'll go with that. So I wish you could have three players to the G League, but you can, unfortunately. So Trey Young, Lankford, Culver, Collins, Alex. Let's uh, replace Alex Lynn with Bull Bull. That, give about Alex Lynn about 22. Let's give Bull Bull about 29 or so. Kid Bazemore off the bench on Crab Bembry. So, yeah, not that good of a team this first season, but that's okay. Like I said, this is going to just be a project. And... Just curious to see how this team will do. It's a balanced offense or a balanced system. Seven seconds. I guess I can change it to seven seconds and see if that works better. And we'll go ahead and change uh, Lloyd Pierce's stuff. And guys, I think I'm just going to see my this first season. I just kind of want to see how this team will do. It's going to be okay if we don't make the playoffs, to be honest. I'm, like I said, this is going to be a project throughout the video. Let's see how this team develops. Guys, at the end of the season, we went 36 and 46. Not too bad of a record, to be honest. But here were the player stats where it should get interesting. We had about... 24 points from Trey Young, absolutely killing it with eight assists. We had 15 points from Bull Bull. We had about, you know, 15 from John Collins, 12 and a half from Kim Bazemore, Drew Culver with 12. But this is where I start to see that maybe, like, um, I think, like, Kim Bazemore could have been bought out, like, by the, I think, by the buyout deadline is something we could see out of Kim Bazemore and maybe even Alan Crabb, for instance. But uh, we're projected the fourth pick from Cleveland and the ninth pick overall, our own pick. So let's see. We jump into the top three, which is awesome. And we also have the ninth pick. So, guys, we just got to keep turning along here. Lloyd Pierce is still our head coach. Let's go ahead and fire our trainer, though, because we have a lot of uh, young players to develop. So we need three untapped potential. So let's sign him, and uh, let's get a good head scout as well. And we'll sign him, and then let's get a good assistant GM, and we'll sign him, and bam. All right, so now we can move on and go to the NBA draft. Like I said, the third pick overall and the ninth pick. So let's just see what's available at the third pick, man. So uh, we can just go from there. But for the third pick, we have James Wiseman, LaMelo Ball, and RJ Hampton and Cole Anthony. So if I'm the Hawks here, I have my point guard of the future. I kind of have my ideal starting five, right? You have John Collins and all these players. So with this third pick overall, you might look at it and be like, you know what? Maybe we start to get a little aggressive here, but I really don't know, man. So we have Jared Culver, Bull Bull, Romeo Langford. I did resign Alan Crabb because, you know, he's 28 years old and I could just always end up trading him if need be. He only needed like $3 million a year. So I was like, why not? So uh, I'm very, I'm not sure what I want to do with this pick because James Wiseman, we could take James Wiseman or something. Mullah Ball. Uh, we could have like uh, Bull Bull hit the bench, I guess. Cole Anthony. Uh, Theo, we could take Precious, but I really like uh, our team as is. But you know what? I guess we could go like RJ Hampton would be nice, but I really don't think Trey Young and RJ Hampton. I don't know how that would work. So James Wiseman, seven one out of Memphis. You know, someone that I could see myself getting. So I guess my best case scenario here, we can go with James Wiseman 
and then we can go uh, maybe someone here at the ninth pick. So James Wiseman. RJ Hampton is still available, man. As much as I don't know how I'm going to make this work, I'm going to dig. I'm just going to take it. So we'll take uh, the next available player right there out of New Zealand, and uh, we'll go with that. And uh, I think, wait a minute. Is he the one that, RJ Hampton is the guy that uh, went to uh, overseas. Yeah, right? Right? I think I'm right about that. So RJ Hampton and, yeah, uh, James Wiseman at the third pick. So that's a pretty good draft. I think that's a pretty good draft, if you ask me. I think Jordan in the second round, but that's okay. Player options are going to go ahead and bring back all of our youngins. And uh, now qualifying offers, DeAndre Bembry, Deontay Davis. We're probably just going to move on from them because we really don't need them. Inside cap table, we're probably going to have a bunch of money that we could spend in free agency. But you know what? I'm probably going to look at free agency and say $60.95 million. That is insane, guys. And we could definitely get like a bunch of players around with this roster. But I'm just curious to see how this team would do without it. So RJ Hampton is the backup point guard right now. We have Ro Romeo Langford and Kevin Herter, uh, we have a small forward, Chris Wilkes, and I actually might just move Alan Crabb to small forward. I think he actually goes up if you do that. He does. So we'll move into small forward to be the backup small forward for Jared Culver. We have Amari Spellman coming back, and then we have James Wiseman on Bull Bull. So, like I said, I really don't know. I question the fit with RJ Hampton. Is he just going to be our bench point guard, I guess? Like, I don't know, man. So I don't know what he could get us. I'm just curious to see what this would get us. Mike Conley, Malcolm Brogdon. I'm just going to see what this team would do, man. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, I know we have so much money to spend, but I think, like I said, I'm just going to see this team just go forward, and then the Hawks could eventually use all that cap space to sign their young rookies when they come off their expiring or their rookie deals, and they are expecting, like, you know, max offers and stuff once they perform well enough. Like, I just like this roster. I think building through the draft would be a nice uh, thing for the Hawks to do. I just uh, question whether or not the guys I got in this year's draft, James Wiseman, James Wiseman and RJ Hampton, um, I don't think they'd be available like they just were. I mean, uh, getting James Wiseman at the third pick maybe wasn't too crazy, but RJ Hampton at the ninth pick, I think he is projected to go a little bit higher than that. But you know what? We'll see. We'll see how he performs overseas and whatever. So uh, on tap potential, we have three of those now. We kind of needed it. So let's go ahead and see. We have Kevin Herter because he's going to be the starting shooting guard this year. Let's give, uh, let's see what is, uh, Bull Bull is, of course, as well. And let's go ahead and give, uh, maybe Amari Spellman as, to it as well. And let's go ahead and see what this starting five is looking like, who they want to start, who they want off the bench. So, nine man rotation, we have Trey Young, Kevin Herter, Jared Culver, uh, John Collins, James Wiseman, Bull Bull, RJ Hampton, Amari Spellman, and Romeo Langford. That is a young roster, if you ask me. I think every single player on this roster is on their rookie deal. That is crazy. So, uh, yeah, we have a nine-man rotation with players on their rookie contracts. That is actually, like, amazing, if you ask me. And then we can go ahead and use the G League for, like, Jada McDaniels. Let's see, do we have him after this year? We do. And Chris Wilkes, we don't. So I'll go ahead and just probably send Jalen McDaniels to the G League, because why not? And let's go ahead and just see how this team would do, man. Uh, we got a four-star rating now with this young roster. Let's go ahead and just see what this next season, and let's see... How it goes. At the end of the season, we go a record of 44 and 38. Good enough for the four seed in the Eastern Conference. So we're getting some playoff experience, which is very good for a young roster. We had about 25 points from Trey Young, eight assists, 15 points from Jarrett Culver, uh, 14 points uh, off the bench for RJ Hampton. James Wyman had 14 and seven as well. Bobo with 13 himself. John Collins. Kevin Herter, Romeo Langford, Spellman all doing their thing as well. So this roster is starting to look, you know, pretty darn decent. But now we're facing the Toronto Raptors in the first round who jump up 1-0 on us. 2-0, are they going to sweep us in this first round? They looks like they're going to, and they absolutely do. So we get swept. I'm kind of torn whether or not I just want to keep seeing how this young roster will develop. Or do I want to make, like, some moves for this roster and, like, start to turn this thing along and see what this team would do if we, like, you know, trade for some players. But... I really like the idea of just keeping this young core intact, which is what I think I'm going to do going forward. I think I'm going to do that for this next season and see how that goes. And then we'll decide what we want to do on the fourth season if we do decide to do a fourth season. So I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and just cut into a next season uh, after we see who wins the championship here, of course. Um, although, actually, you know what? Maybe I won't do that because we're going to have more first round picks this year. So uh, I think the net pick, which is uh, actually lottery protected. So if they do fall in the lottery, uh, the net should have their pick back. Uh, we have the 11th pick, so I'll probably just end up giving that pick back to the Nets, and uh, we have the 24th. So actually, you know what? Don't even worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and cut to next season, and let's see how this team does, just developing a little bit more, another season under their belt.
For the end of this season, we went 52 and 30 facing the New York Knicks in the first round. Here are your player stats. Let's go look at these. Trey Young with 20 points. We had Jared Culver with about 16. RJ Hampton with about 15 and about five off the bench. Bull Bull 13. Everyone's just kind of doing their thing, right? So behind, uh, what's his name? Of course, Trey Young. But I'm curious to see how far we can go in this year's playoff. We are facing the Knicks, though, so we got to be careful. Facing RJ Barrett, Jamal Murray, DeAndre Jordan, Kevin Knox. Look at all those guys. But I think we'll be good. Let's go ahead and simulate Kerr around against the Knicks. We're up 1-0 to start. Uh, they do even it up with us. 2-1 uh, for them. Please don't lose. Okay, we're down 3-1. That's not a good sign at all. We're down 3-1, and I'm not liking that too much. So, uh, you know what, guys? I think if we do lose here, probably just run another season, to be honest. I think I just kind of want to just keep seeing what this team can do with development. Like, you know, teams get better, of course, when uh, you just keep developing the players and, you know, experience under their belt. They get better every season, so you guys get the point. But there is a chance that we do come down from 3-0, or 3-1, and that is not going to be the case. I'm going to simulate one more year. Probably not going to do anything. Like I said, this is more of just like, uh, just kind of wanted to see what this team could do if we just continue to build through the draft. Probably going to have to resign a couple of players. But uh, like I said, we're just going to see how this young team can do. And we're going to do one more season. Let's see how it goes. At the end of this last and final season, RJ Hampton wins sixth man of the year, averaging 19 points off the bench. Giannis. Uh, yeah, so not too bad. Here's your NBA first team. Let's make sure we don't have anybody like on there. That'd be kind of crazy. All defensive, all rookie. I mean, I guess not too crazy because we're pretty far into these guys' career now. But 55 and 27 is the final record for uh, the video. 19 and a half, 19, you know, still basic stuff. But everything is looking pretty good. John Collins up to a 91 overall. Trey Young is as well. We have an 89 overall. James Wiseman. Hopefully we can get out of the first round this time. That's all I'm hoping for. We down 1-0 down to the Wizards. 2-1 to the Wizards now. Can we go up 2-2? Two, two? Okay, can we even it up? Go up 3-2. Can we win in six games? And we're going to seven games. And, of course, we lose to the Washington Wizards. So that is how the video is going to end. So we did four seasons. I kind of just curious to see how this team would do. And that's what happened. So we lost to a John Wall. And a Car... Oh, I thought that said... I thought that was Carmelo Anthony, but Cole Anthony. So maybe I should have taken Cole Anthony, guys. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely hope you enjoyed. What do you guys think about the Atlanta Hawks going forward? And, uh, like, just what do you guys think that... What do you guys expect to see out of them? I expect to see them draft, like, maybe Cameron Reddish and, like, Bull Bull or and Jackson Hayes. I, I really do expect him to fill out that small forward spot and the center spot in this year's draft. But, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely leave a like if you enjoyed it. But this is Crushables, and I'm saying peace.